Hello all, my name is Ashutosh Rastogi. I am a teacher by profession. My mission is to impart quality education for all. For that purpose, I am creating these videos. If you appreciate my work, then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that I could get the motivation to prepare more videos. Anyways, today in this second part of our multiple access techniques, we will going to discuss about time division multiple access and the hybrid multiple access techniques, which is nothing but the combination of FDMA as well as TDMA. So these are the outlines. We'll going to start up with the introduction. Then we will going to discuss about TDMA, which will be followed by the TDMA frame structure. Then we will discuss various advantages, disadvantages of TDMA, followed by the applications of TDMA. And then finally, we'll going to conclude by discussing the combination of FDMA and TDMA, that is the hybrid techniques. So in our last lecture, we have discussed about the multiple access environment where multiple users are competing to acquire the link so that they can transmit their information obviously in the interference limited environment. We have also discussed about the contention free protocols where we have discussed that we will going to divide our channel in such a way that there should be no overlapping among any two users. So there will be no conflict among any two users and they can transmit their information in the interference free environment. So we have discussed that there are actually four dimensions exist in which we can divide our channel such as your frequency, time, code and space. We have also seen that uh, the FDMA that is your frequency division multiple access in which we will going to divide our channel in the frequencies its advantages, disadvantages and the application areas of FDMA. So now in this particular lecture, we will going to discuss about two other channelization mechanism that is your FDMA and the combination of both that is your FDMA and TDMA, which is called as your hybrid technique. So now the next technique is your time division multiple access. So TDMA is called as your time division multiple access. So what we are going to do in our time division multiple access environment is each user can access the channel in rounds. That is, we will not provide the access to each and every user for all the time. Although we are providing the access of complete channel for a smaller duration of time. That is why we are saying that we are providing access to the channel in round. In a complete one round, user get a smaller duration of time in which it can access the complete frequency band. Each user gets fixed length slot. So this is fixed length slot or timing slot I'm talking about in each round. So in each round, individual user will going to get a smaller amount of time where it is allowed to transmit its information. So we have written length slot as length is equal to packet transmission time just because time division multiple access system would have been used in our digital communication system where we are transmitting our information in the forms of packet. So during that time slot, individual user must have to transmit its complete information. That is why we have written that. So each user can transmit the signal using same frequency, but at different time. So here, what important point is each and every individual user can transmit the signal using the same frequency, but at different time. It means all the user can using the same frequency band, but since they are present at the different time, so this is how we are trying to avoid the interference. So entire bandwidth is available to the user, but only for the small duration of time, that is the time slot duration. Another important point about your TDMA is, in this particular scenario, the complete bandwidth is made available to the user, but not for all the time. It is only limited to the smaller duration of time within that round. So in single round, it will going to get only small duration where it could transmit or receive it information. So this particular figure is showing the working of your time division multiple access. Again, these are three dimensions such as your code, frequency and time. We are again assuming that six number of users are trying to access the environment. But here what we are doing is we are dividing the time access into equal number of parts and we are also putting some time difference between two consecutive time slots. So this particular time duration would have been called as your guard band. So guard band are there to prevent the overlapping of consecutive users signal due to the timing mismatch. So here from this particular figure, it is also being clear that in this particular multiple access techniques, all the frequency band is made available 
to each and every individual user that is your k1 k2 k3 up to k6 but here the condition is that complete frequency band is made available to the user but only for a smaller duration of time so this is how your tdma system functions so in general tdma systems divide the channel time into frames each frame is further partitioned into time slots each time slot only one user is allowed to either transmit or receive so this statement is quite complex please try to focus on that so in general tdma systems will going to divide the complete channel time whatever time slot whatever time duration we have we will going to divide them into frames and then each frame is further being divided into time slot and one time slot we will going to provide an individual user in which it is allowed to transmit or receive its information so this is what we are doing in our tdma and that frame will keep on rotating so what do you mean by that i mean when first frame will get completed second frame with the same sequences will going to appear and then after that third frame so it is keep on rotating so only digital data must be used since we are using buffer and bus transmission so we had already discussed that tdma would have been used in our digital communication system and we are also using buffer and burst mode of transmission in tdma so what do we mean by buffer and burst mode of transmission we are only allowed to transmit our information only the given time duration so once we have transmitted our information in our time slot then we have to wait till in the next frame once time slot appear so during that waiting time it will going to buffer that information that it is required to transmit to the receiver and when the time slot appears it will going to transmit its complete information which it has buffered in the burst form that is larger amount of information will get passed into the smaller duration of time so that is called as the bursty nature of transmission this is how we have implemented our tdma systems so each user occupies a cyclically repeating time slot so a channel may be thought of as a particular time slot of every frame where m time slots comprise a frame so this is what we have tried to explain it what do you mean by cyclically repeating the time slot and a channel may be thought of as a particular time slot of every frame where n time slots comprise a frame so whatever we have mentioned let us understand it with the help of frame structure of tdma so this particular figure is showing the frame structure of tdma so one tdma frame mainly consists of three parts that is your preamble information and the trailing bits so preamble contains various redundant information which are necessary to process the information it basically consists of your synchronization information sequence number etc trailing bits are nothing but it is your ending bit which will going to provide the information that here one tdma frames ends so again this information field would have been divided into n number of slots slot 1 slot 2 slot 3 up to slot n and each and every individual slot will going to contain these amount of information so what does different amount of information that any user slot might have is it is containing your guard bits synchronization bits control bits information and your crc that is your cyclic redundancy chip so guard bits synchronization bits control bits these are again certain redundant information which are not the part of information but they are your basically your controlling bits or they provides us the information that how information bits will get processed so these guard bits are there just to avoid the interference among the consecutive time slots these are your synchronization bits which is used for syncing purpose between the transmitter as well as the receiver then these are the control bits which is used to provide the information that how the given information in this particular yellow block will going to get accessed and this is your crc which is nothing but your cyclic redundancy check which will going to provide certain sort of error correction detection capabilities in all other bits so this is the structure of your one time slot so this particular frame will get replicated once one particular frame will going to end up and this process will keep going on so now let us understand how efficient our tdma system is so efficiency of tdma is the measure of the percentage of bits per frame which contains transmitted data i mean per frame how many number of bits are there which are the information bits this is the measure of the efficiency of any tdma system so the transmitted data includes the source and the channel coding bits so one thing should be quite clear 
that the transmitting data comprise of only two types of data which includes your source as well as the channel coding bits so efficiency of tdma frame would have been given as bt minus boh upon bt and if we have to calculate it in terms of percentage we have to multiply it with this 100 so what is this bt bt is the total number of bits that would have been transmitted from source to destination and uh, your boh is nothing but these are your overhead bits which are not be the part of your information but which are actually necessary for effective signal transmission so here boh includes all overhead bits such as preamble guard bits etc so as we had already mentioned that overhead bits are not consisting of any sort of information but they are necessary for the effective information exchange so in general we could say that apart from your information bits and the channel coding bits whatever bits you have that would have been considering as your overhead bits so we could also say that the efficiency is nothing but it is the ratio of the amount of information bit with the total transmitted bit so while solving the numerical problems you need to be focused about what are the bits which are comprising of your information so there might be possible that in your numerical problem your overhead bits information would have been given in its sub components form such as your synchronization bits guard bits control bits etc so just keep in mind that you have to subtract that bits from the total number of bits in order to get the information about the complete information bits and then you have to take the ratio with the bt and in order to get the efficiency in terms of percentage you have to multiply it with the so reasonable amount of total transmitted bits must be dedicated to synchronization purpose channel identification also guard slots are necessary to separate users so this is a small point that i have to make that in the complete transmitted bits many of the bits would have been dedicated to your synchronization purpose channel identification guard slots which are essentially required to separate among the different users as well as the effective communication process so obviously i'm again going to repeat that that your overhead bits is not being the part of your information any information will not going to contain in your overhead bits but still they are very necessary for effective signal transmission so the total number of channels or users in tdma can be given by n is equal to m times of bt minus 2b guard divided by bc so where m is the total number of tdma users per radio channel and n is equal to number of users or you could say that number of channels bt is the total bandwidth bc is the channel bandwidth and b guard is the guard band so if you closely observe about this particular expression this bt minus 2b guard upon bc is nothing but it is showing the number of users in your fdma channel so the total number of users or channels in the tdma which would have been given as capital n that will be equal to m times total number of users in your fdma so by this essence we could easily conclude that the capacity of tdma system is much larger in comparison to your fdma system so some of the advantages are it can assign more time to the sender with heavier load so as we have already discussed that uh, the major disadvantage of FDMA system is it is not doing well or it is not functioning well when user is having uneven loads. So what we can do in our DDMA system is we could give more number of time slots or more amount of time for individual user which is generating higher amount of traffic. So this is the advantage of your TDMA system. There is no need of precise narrow band filter as we are required in our fdma systems in order to avoid the overlapping of two neighboring channels or users who are using neighboring frequencies since tdma is functional on the philosophy of buffer and burst so it will going to buffer the amount of information and it will going to generate burst amount of traffic when it has got its turn or time slot so by this manner we could say that it can save more amount of power since it is not supposed to transmit all the time it is also having higher capacity in comparison to fdma system so in our last slide we had already seen that the typical capacity of tdma systems is m times larger than your fdma systems where m is the number of users that we can attain in a single sub channel 
So now the disadvantages. So the major disadvantages of your TDMA systems are it requires timing synchronization. Since if timing synchronization is not there, then obviously the contagious slots user data will going to overlap with each other and interference will going to happen. So that is why it is requiring very high timing synchronization else the functionality of TDMA will going to affect. So now we're going to discuss the applications of TDMA. So TDMA is used in 2G cellular systems as we had already discussed it is used in our digital communication systems. So TDMA is used in 2G cellular systems such as your GSM. You could say that your global system for mobile communication. Interim standard 136. Personal digital cellular which is also called as PDC in short form. And uh, IDEN that is your integrated digitally enhanced network. And in digital enhanced cordless telecommunication system standards for portable phones. So in all those communication systems for multiple access environment TDMA would have been employed. So these are the application areas of your TDMA. So now moving forward, we will going to study about how we can enhance or increase the typical capacity of any communication system. By combining both this paradigm that, th that is your FDMA and TDMA, we can basically enhance or increase the capacity. So next technique is your combination of FDMA TDMA or sometimes it would have also been called as your hybrid multiple access technique. So it is basically the combination of both the methods. That is we will going to combine FDMA as well as TDMA in order to enhance or increase the capacity. A channels get certain frequency band for some time. So obviously in this particular scheme what we will going to do is we will going to divide our frequency bands just like in our FDMA and side by side we will also going to divide our time. So what channel unit we are allocated or we are allocating or providing to our individual user is we are providing a smaller time slot in the sub frequency band to an individual user. So the advantages of this hybrid scheme is it has the protection against the frequency selective interference. So what do you mean by frequency selective interference? It is the interference that will going to happen in the wireless communication system over the selective range of frequencies. So what do you mean by that? It means in a wideband wireless channel bandwidth some of the frequency regions are highly populated with the noise. So those frequency bands will gone through much higher amount of interference. So at the receiving side it is not been possible for our receiver to retrieve the information back from those frequency band signals. So since we are dividing our wideband frequency spectrum into several narrowband frequency channels so we can avoid those frequency channels which possess higher amount of interference. So in this manner we can say that it provides protection against the frequency selective fading. So another advantage of using this hybrid technique is it provides much higher capacity with time compression. So since we are providing an individual user a smaller narrow band channel for a smaller duration of time. So obviously the capacity would become much larger in comparison to standalone FDMA or TDMA. So the disadvantages of your hybrid scheme is precise coordination is required since the channel conditions and the user requirement and demand are fluctuating or changing in the dynamic fashion. So obviously in order to cater that we need to have some precise coordination so that we could fulfill the demand of individual users in the interference free environment. So the example of this hybrid technique is your GSM. So in our 2G GSM systems we are exploiting this hybrid multiple access scheme that is your FDMA and TDMA. So this particular figure is showing how we are actually dividing our frequency access as well as the time access in order to provide the channel unit to individual user so that they could transmit their information. So as we have seen in our FDMA systems we are basically dividing our frequency in six part and in our TDMA we have divided our time access into six number of parts for six number of users. So this particular figure is showing that here we are dividing in both the frequency as well as the timing. So what we could say that this individual signaling unit, this individual signaling unit would have been provided to individual user for transmitting its own information. So we could easily saw from this particular figure is that if we are utilizing only FDMA, we could serve only six number of users and 
if we assume that for all the users we are providing all frequency band and we are dividing the time axis into six number of slots then with the help of tdma in standalone fashion we can also serve six number of users but when we will going to combine both the tdma as well as the cdma we can serve 36 different number of users so it is easily visible that hybrid schemes offer much larger amount of capacity in comparison to fdma and tdma standalone hopefully now you get the complete insight about channelization so in case of any doubt you can ask in the comment section these are the references thank you very much for your patient hearing